Brother Chrysostom is a fifth year Dominican student uh, brother approaching solemn vows in May and is currently two years away from his ordination. He completed his undergraduate from the Seminary of Christ the King in Mission, British Columbia, where he is from. His MA philosophy last spring at DSPT and is currently in the MDiv program at DSPT. His background includes work in onshore oil rigs, restaurants, and pro-life evangelization. Okay, so uh, in preparing for talking here today, I actually went through three different drafts. Um, the first one I thought I was gonna speak about different Catholic principles on lay involvement and uh, lay activity and mission in the church. But then I realized that this is probably gonna be covered by other people and probably a lot better than what I would have done. And so I said, okay, maybe I should speak about how I as a student would envision this happen in the future. And I started writing on that, but then I thought, you know what, there's probably a lot of people who are gonna be speaking about this as well. What can I particularly add or contribute to this conversation? Uh, what would be unique? Uh, then I thought, well, I am a student brother who is in formation to become a priest, uh, and I was also in a diocesan seminary, and I had about a five-year break in between when I thought I was going to pursue uh, just life as a lay Catholic and be involved, hopefully, as much as I could in the church. So I kind of went through this kind of three different hills um, where I thought, uh, where I wanted to be active in my life. And so I'll kind of just give reflections basically on, on how I see this and also how I think that the Dominicans are unique in their ability, I would say, to help along this, this, this vision or this uh, re-realization um, re of the mission and the responsibility of the lay mission in the church today. Um, so as they said in my kind of introduction, yes, I went to a seminary for four years. It was a diocesan seminary run by uh, Benedictine monks. And then after that, um, I went out into the world and I started working in different places and traveling to different countries. Uh, most of my work was in restaurants, in kind of touristy resort towns, and I also worked on onshore oil rigs. There's a lot of oil in Canada, where I'm from, uh, and you also meet a lot of young people there as well, uh, just trying to make some money and use the money for a good time. Now, when I was in the parish, uh, we were being formed to be, uh, sorry, when I was in the seminary, we were being formed to be parish priests. Now, the role of the parish priest is primarily to be a pastor, right? And by that I mean, to him is entrusted the care of the souls of his church his task, um, his task, secondary to his own sanctification, is the fostering of faith and sancti sanctification in his sheep. A side job might be evangelization of his people um, and the people in his geographical area that might not come to his church. But practically speaking, this will always be a secondary task at best. And with today's limitations on priests, it probably will often slim to never. There will always be a hierarchy of his needs and the sanctification of the people who come to his church on Sundays, or at least once a month, once a month will take precedent over any sort of evangelization or, or extra work that he might have in mind. Now, the role of a priest as a monk, because I went to seminary taught by monks, um, it, it's very apparent. It's work and prayer. That's the Benedictine model, at least anyways. But it's contemplation. That is their primary role. A monk might help teach at a seminary, or a might, might, uh, monk might help to give retreats, but that would always be secondary to his primary role of contemplation, of, of living out here in this world what will be in the world to come. Now, before I speak about the primary role of a Dominican, I'm going to stop and I'm going to start speaking about my life in the world uh, when I was in between seminary and being a Dominican. Uh, when I was in the world, I encountered a lot of young people on the oil rigs and also in these kind of resort towns who wanted to be happy. They wanted to live it up. Um, they went there and they did everything that the world told them would make them happy. Um, so drugs, sex, um, a lot of experiences, adventures. But people would usually realize that I was a Christian quickly and they would confide in me quietly, usually uh, separate from everybody else. You know, they would say things like, you know, I'm just, I'm really unhappy. I'm not fulfilled. Or remember this one girl, she told me that, you know, I sleep with a different guy every week and I, I just, I feel empty on the inside. 
and this one guy in the oil rig, he told me, um, you know, I have a lot of money from working on the oil rigs. I have got everything. I got a snowmobile, I got a boat, I got a four by four, I got a huge house, but I just feel so empty. And the reason why they were telling me this is not just because I was an open ear to listen to, is that they knew that I was a Christian. And so usually after kind of almost like confessing their emptiness, they would ask me, so why are you a Christian? And so I would start to, you know, share the gospel with them. But through these experiences, I came to realize, why is there nobody preaching the gospel when everybody's so thirsty for it, right? And they didn't come to me because I knew I was in the seminary either, or they knew that maybe one day in the future I'd be a priest. I was just a Christian layperson who seemed to be walking according to some other principle and seems to be more fulfilled than what they are according um, with all the things that they were told that would make them happy. So during this time, I did start to try and find different means for me to be more active in the church, but at least at, at the area where I was living in Alberta, north of Montana, honestly, there was almost no opportunities for lay people to get involved at all. It was still this very old kind of, um, the pastor is there and he, and he hears confessions, he celebrates mass and, and he visits the sick, and there's not a whole lot else for people to get involved, both in the parish or to people in the parish bounds as well. I did eventually um, join a pro-life organization, uh, but the pro and the pro-life organization was very, very effective in what they did. But unfortunately, um, the local bishop at that time didn't condone the organization. He thought they were too aggressive. Uh, fortunately, the bishop after that, a few years later, then condoned <laughs> that organization and brought them into the high schools to come speak to the kids as well. But you can see the kind of dilemma I felt when I was a lay person at that time. And then eventually I met the Dominicans. Now the life of the Dominican on the other hand, remember the parish priest primarily is for the people in his parish, the monk is primarily for the life of contemplation. The Dominican on the other hand is primarily apostolic. Today we have parishes and schools to run, yes, in our order, but the identity of Dominican is fundamentally to be apostolic, untethered to the care of the souls but rather seeking the conversion and salvation of souls. We know that we as a province and order will probably never fully abandon parishes since converted Christians always need a body to be attached to. Christians on their own don't make sense. You need to be with other Christians. So if you want to convert souls, you have to bring them to a body that they can be a part of in order for them to be alive. All these things being said, it seems to me that the role that we as Dominicans are train, trying to place ourselves in in the 21st century is a rather similar role that we are trying to carve out for the laity as well. The roles are not identical since we have different hierarchical needs in our personal lives that we need to address. The Dominican typically um, being availed to contemplation verse first and then apostolic life second and the layperson more preoccupied in the sanctifi sanctification and education of their own families, their jobs second, and then apostolic life if they have time third. Nonetheless, both seek today to discover new avenues not directly linked and dependent upon sacramental activities that will bring people into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We both seek means to not just sacramentalize people through the parochial network, but to bring them to be disciples of Jesus Christ. There are roles for the lady to fill, yes, in the parish, right? So as uh, you know, finance minister or DRE, um, but I think it can be a little bit difficult for them to find roles outside of the parochial system. I think we're all very well that, you know, lay people, some of them are really great at being administrators and priests. We're not formed actually to be administrators. We're formed in theology and philosophy and some of us might have an administrative background. And so I think that there is this general awareness, but there is a lack of awareness. I think that lay people can and priests can be co-responsible in evangelization outside of the strictly parochial network. There is a movement in our Dominican province to allow more room for innovation outside of this parish model, but we are still trying to find out exactly how this materializes. In fact, we just created a new full-time position of Office of Evangelization and Discipleship for one of our priests to full-time fulfill. 
nonetheless, the biggest step to take is the one that is to actually make room for initi initiative. Now, simply, it often happens that where the priests go, the lady often follow. We have spoken of a clerical culture in the church, and sometimes it is sometimes just better to work with what you have than to just try to drastically change it. Lay initiative today is growing, but if it was trailblazed, trailblazed with priests and lady working together for evangelization, it'd become a lot more fluid. I think that Father Michael Sweeney's work with the Lay Mission Society is a preeminent example of this. So what do I see in the future from my perspective as a student brother, as a Dominican student brother, a few years away from ordination? It is that it is not a question as to whether there will be greater lay involvement in the mission of the church. It is a question as to whether you are doing it well or not. This stands both in the parish and in apostolic life as well. However, if, if there is to be truly co-responsibility in apostolic work that involves evangelization, there has to be well-educated lay people as well who can act as leaders alongside the, uh, alongside the clergy. I think that sometimes there can be a bit of suspicion both on the part of the clergy towards lay people and of lay people towards the clergy. Uh, I think uh, sometimes the clergy can be worried that there might be, if something is completely dominantly lay-led, um, it could you know, run into some kind of excess, either excess in, or, uh, in, in heterodoxy or in uh, heteropraxis. Vice versa, uh, like in the case of the pro life work I was with, some of the lay people in, in lay, uh, dominantly lay organizations, fear that if priests get too involved, they'll stop you or they'll shut you down because you're not acting according to how they envision things. But I think that instead of just, I think that one, uh, that this whole conference, I think what this conference is trying to kind of uh, trailblaze and kind of the, the, the idealism that we're trying to tear down is that it is a uh, either or, but rather we are co-responsible for making disciples of Jesus Christ. And going back to the point that I was digressing from, sorry, uh, is that what we need, therefore, in order to help break down this kind of uh, uh, mutual suspicion that sometimes, I'm not saying always happens, sometimes occurs, is for lay people to take higher studies in education. Being a clerical student at the DSBT then has been a tremendous blessing because I study alongside lay students. I think it is an amazing groundwork for the future realization of this co-responsibility of the mission. School here is not limited to a priestly collegial group that I found in seminary, but to Christians who are preparing for more apostolic work. Thank you.